شما بو و برو روح و قدیش و حضاله و شریر و امین Dear God, we thank you from all our heart for all the blessing. We thank you, Lord, for being the good shepherd. We thank you for being our father. We thank you that we are member of the body of the Holy Church. We cannot thank you enough, Lord, because the church that you consecrated by your blood, by your cross, you chose us to make us a member in this church, in this body. I ask you, Lord, to open our eyes to see the beauty of this bride, to see the beauty and the blessing of this very beautiful bride, the church. Open our eyes so we can really realize how fortunate we are to be a member of the church. I thank you, Lord, for making us really part and members of your body and keep us lord in these days and open our eyes so we can always wherever we are we can really be the living church wherever we move wherever we come wherever we go to we can be living church we can reflect your love to everybody around us we thank you lord and we ask you to guide us this bible study so we can really enjoy your company and we can enjoy your presence amongst us. I ask you all this with the prayer of our Virgin Mary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, now, uh, Megan, she will share the uh, slides with you. And uh, I will try to read some of this slide and I will ask a couple of you to read uh, other slides. Okay, so uh, we will begin uh, with this slide. This slide we see in our churches, different maybe uh, shape, different uh, design, different maybe uh, look, but it all serve the same purpose on the altar in the middle you can see behind me here where is the chalice and the pardon behind it there is a small like a closet you can see it on the left side of uh, the the uh, slide we call it vator corbono or tabernacle in english you can see also the middle uh, picture how the pattern and the chalice and behind it, there is a small also closet, Beitot Corbono, which is the house of the Eucharist. This is what literally it means. In English, they call it tabernacle. The tabernacle, we were going to read about it. The clergy usually leave fragment of the communion, Fagro. So communion or Fagro. Fagro in Syriac, it means the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. So usually the clergy during the liturgy, after he uh, break the body, after we close the curtain, second time in the liturgy. So the priest, he took some fragments and he put it on the uh, picture you see on the right side. There is small, I, I, I was looking, what, what's the name of this? It's like the communion holder. It's a small container. We use it only for this purpose. So we don't put, use it for any reason. It has in, in English and Latin Greek name. They call it Pixy, P-X-Y. This is what they call it. It means wooden, a small container. The literal translation. You can see there is a cross on it. Usually we put if we want to go. So let's see what the, this slide say. Uh, usually the uh, clergy leave fragments in a communion, Fagro, which is placed inside the tabernacle. So we put in this small uh, uh, communion holder or container, we put fragment and we, we leave it or we place it inside the tabernacle, which is Beitot Corbono, inside the tabernacle, and used during baptisms and when those who are sick which to receive, wish to receive Fagro. In other words, it's usually over there. So for me, 
last Sunday I did liturgy. I don't take, I don't take the, I don't take the. I don't take the corbono with me to home. Okay, so sorry. I have to turn my phone off. I don't take corbono with me. I put it over there. I don't see the photo. I'm so sorry, the the slide. We I don't take it. I leave it in this small container and then I put it in the betel corbono or tabernacle. So in case. Any emergency, somebody sick, somebody uh, has any problem, we have to give him communion. I go to the church, I pick it from there and I go give communion to this person. Or if I have baptism, so during the baptism, also in our church tradition, uh, we give three sacraments, baptism, commun uh, holy chrism, all may ruin, or confirmation, although they, also they call it, and then communion, so we use it. Only, I want you to pay attention to this note, only bishop, priest, full deacon, not any deacon. We call it in serious bio. He put the hororo. We will explain that next time. Uh, from front and behind, he doesn't put it around his waist or around his body. It's only he put it from the front and from the back. Full deacon, okay, are allowed to use this communion, which is a place in the tabernacle, to give it to sick person or if somebody has emergency or anything. Only, not any kind of deacon, not coroyo, not reader, not a fediacno, uh, the singer, not anyone. Only full deacon, priest, of course, bishop, patriarch, which is the clergy only, okay? And again, Beitut Corbono, Tabernacle, it's always placed right in the middle of the altar behind the chalice and the pad. Okay. Let's go to the second uh, slide. And uh, the second slide, uh, we call it the things that we use, the bread that we use during the liturgy. We call it Tabo. Pruller, we call it Tabai. This circle or round braid, you see it, it has shape of cross and it cut in pieces. Now I will read uh, some of the explanation and then we will continue talk about the details because every single things in this braid, the way you see it, you see dots, you see crosses, you see dots around, why it's round, why it crosses, all this we're going to explain. Tabao or Eucharist braid. The Eucharist bread is made of flour, water, salt, and olive oil. Only these four material we use. We use nothing else. Flour, water, salt, olive oil, nothing else, okay? Olive oil, usually we add it when we make the dough, but also mainly olive oil is used on the wooden mold for imprinting the pa uh, pattern. We'll explain in the next uh, slide. But this is the mo wooden mold. We call it hathmo, okay? Or in English, they call it wooden mold. Wooden mold, you see, it's like something inside. It's a grave, okay? It has the same shape, you see, the braid or the top, oh, uh, you can see it. I make it closer, okay? From this side, you see it has two sides. Other side, we have different shape, okay? This shape and this shape. I also will explain about it. Well, I will read the, these two verses that's here in this slide. And as they were eating, we're talking about the uh, Holy Thursday, okay, when Jesus did the Last Supper. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, you see, bread, okay, blessed, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. So he took bread after he blessed it, and broke it, and he said, this is my bread. So you see the order? 
he took it on his hand and he said pray you see in the second part in the reading in the top it say our syriac orthodox church tradition for the eucharistic bread or tabo has to be leavened bread not unleavened bread leavened bread which is when we make the dough we have to put yeast it has to be leaven. We don't use unleaven without uh, yeast. Our tradition, the Orthodox Church in the whole world, us, the Coptic, even the Greek, we used, we have to have leavened bread. We have to put yeast in the dough so it becomes leavened or raised. The Catholic, unlike the Catholic, they use only unleavened bread. It's like circle. So pretty much they use only flour and water, nothing else. We, the Orthodox, we use bread. In the Jewish tradition, is very well known word bread and unleavened bread. Okay, they call it lahmu. When they say lahmu, they mean literally bread, leavened bread. Okay? When they don't use word lahmu, that means dough, it's only made from flour and water. No yeast. This, they don't call it lahmu. Lahmu, only, 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 they use, uh, sorry, they use, has to have yeast in it. Okay, that's why we made word braid in the verse bold so you can focus on it. Okay, and the verse underneath the picture on the right side is see when uh, uh, Jesus said, I am the braid. Okay, braid of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And the verse inside Suryoyo writing is the same of these verse. You see? So this is, we call it tab'o, one piece tab'o. Uh, many we call it tab'i, has to be leavened bread. We use these four material, flour, water, salt, and olive oil. Nothing else, okay? Any question here before we go to the uh, second slide? Okay. Again, Abuna, I, I have a question. Yes, I want you just to see this, how beautiful it is. It, it's grave. Okay. And the other one different, and we'll explain next uh, one. Go ahead, uh, Megan, please. So if ours has to be leaven, why don't you put yeast in as one of the ingredients? Because leavened bread, okay, so we don't count it as one of the ingredients. So these four ingredients, leavened, just raising the bread. It's not like, so we can call five materials, yes, of course, but usually we say these four materials and it represents the four, they say the material that made the whole world, the water, the, the dirt or the dust, and uh, the salt at the fire and uh, the, the, the air. So these four material, they represent the whole material of the world. So pretty much when we make it, like we bless the whole world and we offer it to the altar. So after we bless it, pretty much like it's a symbol, we bless the whole materials in the world. This is how we, we, we explain it as the Syrian Orthodox Church. Okay. Usually, let's say I make it, usually the clergy make it, we put two cup of flour. Okay. We put one cup of water. We put like a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of, uh, let's say, yeast, and maybe olive oil, oil maybe two uh, eat a uh, food spoon or three, and we use it when we stamp the dough after we cut it circle, so it doesn't stick the dough in the wooden mold or in the half. Okay. Let's go to the second uh, slide, please. I ask maybe uh, Stephen, Stephen Murat, can you uh, read 
slowly we call it hefmo the wooden molden stamp we can call it stamp we don't have to you know read all of it always but stamp stamp or hefmo hefmo in syriac stamp or wood wooden mold stamp in english can you please read it sure baruch <clears throat> more the round shape molded stamp represents the global and the eternal the you see the, you see how round it is okay mm -hmm. okay the cross in the middle divides it to four parts, which represents the four gospels matthew mark luke and john and the four corners of the earth the 12 engraved crosses represent the 12 disciples that preach the gospel to the whole world. You see the 12, this, each one, each one. One, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And also another six, this uh, 12, okay? Each one also we call the gmurto, gmurto, which means. Uh, uh, living uh, uh, with it's like a call okay L now we will talk also about it go ahead continue please Steve. there are 72 small circles engraved into the wooden molded stamp which stands for jesus 72 apostles these small dots you see that you see it around okay continue after stamping the dough with the engraving on the wooden the clergy usually imprints five round holes as a sign of a cross, one in the center, one on the top and bottom, and last on the left and right, which symbolizes the five wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see this, the, the, the picture in the middle, down in the middle, there is a red arrow explaining this five dots, okay? or five small holes, this represent the five uh, wounds of Jesus. Anybody knows wh where these five wounds of Jesus when he was on the cross? Okay, anybody uh, can tell? I think uh, I have a guess. Um, so the, the two nails in his hands. Exactly, left, right. The nails in his feet, um, no. and then the, the the crown piercing okay. his skull, or and the the spear that the guard shoved in his rib in his side. So this is what it is like a cross. You see it five. So every single thing here and the hole we make has a meaning. So pretty much the church is so rich in every single details a lot of people they think it's only you know decoration no it's not each one has meaning and each one it tell us how much the church is rich and cares about all the things that we practice okay you can see on the left side there is shape a and b okay we have picture here it's from the top one is a little bit like this Okay, so usually A and B are used during the entire holy liturgical cycle. So every day we can make liturgy. Pretty much here we celebrate weekly. We use this stamp, this wooden mold stamp to stamp the dough to make it the way you see it in the middle. Okay, for the whole liturgy all around the year. Okay. The other shape, which is C and D, okay? You see it's a cross and some crosses, okay, around. This C and D are used during Holy Week on Holy Thursday only. So we stamp this side only for the Holy Thursday. We use different way of breaking the, uh, the bread or the tabo. So now uh, this, uh, the second slide will explain how we break the bread during the liturgy, almost the whole year, and also how we break it on the Holy Thursday. Can we go please to the uh, second slide? 
since there is uh, not a lot of writing, so I will read it. Breaking of bread, or we call it in Syria, soyo. Soyo, which means breaking bread, soyo, make the bread a certain way. And this exactly it happened when usually uh, the deacon closed the curtain and the choir singing, uh, singing the, uh, the hymns. Almost, almost after 50% of the liturgy it happened. And usually we hold the, we hear the deacon, they have uh, the shaker, they shake it at certain times. So when Abuna, he break the break, okay, he read certain thing and each time he read one sentence, he do one move. So he's not doing it like in different order. The same order, all the clergy, all the Syriac Orthodox clergy all over the world, when they close the curtain, he follow the same order to break the braid, to make it, or we call it also the soyo. Okay, so why we close the curtain that time? Why we don't leave the curtain open? Can we leave the curtain open actually? Yes, we can leave it. If we don't have a curtain, it's not a big deal. We are not gonna stop making liturgy because we don't have curtain. But why we close the curtain if we do, or in our Syriac Orthodox Church, we have to have a curtain. Because breaking the braid, now this braid is not a braid anymore. This become body and blood of Jesus Christ. So in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah chapter six, we read that before, how when Isaiah saw the glory of God, filling the whole altar, all the, the temple. And he saw two group of angels singing, holy, 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 Qadish, Qadish, Qadish. We sing it also during the liturgy. He saw this angel, the seraphim or the seraph, they had six wings. With two, they uh, cover their body. With two, they fly and with two, they cover their face. And sometimes you see angels, they have like two wings, okay? Uh, Gaifi, we call them, they cover. And when two around uh, and left, right, which is they fly and two, they cover their uh, body. So we say in our tradition, we say, if the angels cannot look to the glory of God, so who are we to look when the clergy make soyo or break the bread. So that's why we close the curtain. It's not something, we do something so we hide it from the people. It's only pretty much we, we, we see what's in the Bible, we try to make it in the, in the liturgy. So that's why we close the curtain. Why the deacon they shake this certain time? Because when, again, when Abuna break the bread, he said every single sentence read, he do one thing. And then he said, a certain time, he said, uh, uh, the priest, he said, Jesus raised from death. When we, he raised from death, he moved the body up. Okay, when he moved it up, so this deacon, they shake the sisley or the shakers, pretty much like praising God, like he's raised from death. This is what happened behind the curtain, okay? So I will read it, uh, breaking of the bread or soil. Emro, emro, it means lamb, okay? We say lamb of God. So emro, the shape of emro, it's picture one and two. Are used during Holy Week on Holy Thursday, these two shapes. So if we have liturgy, which is we have liturgy, on the Holy Thursday, this is the shape we do the soy or we break the bread. The picture one and two in the middle, in the top and the, uh, in the, the bottom. The church commemorates the last supper of Jesus with his disciples, which we celebrate Holy Liturgy the day of. You see, we don't make shape of like body. Unlike the shapes of uh, picture number three and four, those are used during the Holy Liturgy throughout 
the whole liturgical year, all the time, except the Holy Thursday. You can see mainly picture number four, it's in the bottom on the right side. Most of the clergy, they use this. You can see in the top, there is like head, the right, left hands, the bottom legs. So pretty much we make like somebody crucified, like, like a body or Jesus when he was. So we, we recall what happened. So on Thursday, Jesus, he was doing it. So we use different things. But on other days, other days of the, the year, other time we do liturgy, we uh, use either picture number three or number four. Most of the clergy, they use number four. On the left in the top, there is like a drawing. You can see how we use it. The one on the very left, it's like a head. There is a head, hands, then legs and the body. This is how we recall the crucifixion exactly. Can you see how beautiful? And every time Abuna, when he do liturgy, he do it, he look at it. It's so amazing. We feel like I have the body and blood of Jesus Christ in my hand. That's why it's really so humbling to celebrate liturgy, to attend liturgy, and to, to witness these amazing blessing and grace that happen during the liturgy, becoming the bread and wine, body and blood of Jesus Christ, okay? And by the way, when we do communion, the priest is the only one allowed to make it pieces, to give it to, to the faithful, to receive it during the communion. We call each one, we call it gmurto. Gmurto, it means living cool or charcoal. And this is what Isaiah saw when he saw the glory of God, he said, woe to me, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner person living among a sinner people. So he was like very, very humble down to earth. He said, who I am to, so th to see the glory of God. Then God, he sent one of the angel with the tongue. He, he took a living cool from the uh, the. the the temple and we brought it he touched his lips and he cleans it and this is what happened we, we when we receive body and blood of jesus christ that will clean our sins that's why we we call it the gumurto in Surioyo. gumurto it means living cool or living charcoal okay burning charcoal sounds good and by the way the whole bread is body and each piece it's body and blood, okay? So when we make a soyo, when we make it pieces, we don't make each one become part of the body, but each one, it's the whole body and the whole blood, okay? So when you go to the church, you receive communion, pretty much you take always the whole body and the whole blood of Jesus Christ. How much this piece of murto is big or small, it doesn't matter even if you take very, very small fragment, okay? Let's go to the uh, second uh, one. And now we'll talk about something else. I ask uh, if Sam with us can read uh, this uh, uh, slide. Yeah, Bart Morsayden, Bart Morabuna. So Bishop Throne, the patriarch and bishop sit on the throne that is located on the holy altar during the Holy Liturgy and any church services. The throne is designed in many different ways. An icon of Christ, a symbol of the cross, or the icon of St. Peter is often placed above the bishop's throne. The reason why we have these symbols or icons is because of the authority of the apostolic church tradition. The throne is always located on the left side of the Holy Altar behind the Cetro, Quran. It is a symbol of the bishop's teaching authority in the Syriac Orthodox Church tradition. Okay, you see, we put as much as we could fit in this picture, in these slide photos. You see on the very left on the top, usually in the Patriarchate, even here in St. Mark Cathedral, which is where the bishop is uh, throne is. So you see how it's very beautiful and decorated. And in, in the middle, you see Jesus, the king, sitting on his throne. 
okay? And another one, the one underneath it, you see, or the one where His Holiness said that the Patriarch is sitting uh, behind him, there is an icon of St. Peter, okay? On the right side, also you see uh, His Eminence Sayyidina Jan also, he has usually in top of this throne, okay? We have, uh, in top we have a cross, okay? Why we have it? We have it as a symbol for the authority because we are traditional church. We receive the, 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 the authority as an apostolic church. We receive it from Jesus. He gave it to St. Peter and St. Peter, he established the church of Antioch, the Syriac Orthodox Church of Antioch. And since then, St. Peter, he appoint successor to him and since then, after that, each one, after him, he, the, the, we call the patriarch. Patriarch, it's a Greek word. It means the father of the fathers. Okay? So when he die, they choose another one. We call it patriarch. And we have like a chain. Okay? We have like from St. Peter, from the Lord Jesus Christ until now. We know all the patriarch who were sitting on the throne of St. Peter. And who is whom is he established the church in Antioch okay that's why we call the Syriac Orthodox Church of Antioch okay it's a sample for the authority for the apostolic church and also for as it, it's mentioned here that the patriarch or the bishop they are the keeper of the faith so it's their authority to keep the faith you see in the middle how there is the patriarch and there is a bishop sitting next to him. You see he's a throne. So when he is there, he sits on the throne. When he is not there, the bishop, I'm talking in the archdiocese, in the patriarchate, there is no one can sit on that throne but the patriarch himself. But in any archdiocese or in any church has to have this chair, the, the bishop of that Archdiocese will sit. If there is another bishop visiting, they can sit next to the bishop of that archdiocese from the oldest for in, in their ordination, not the age. Let's say there is five bishops. Who's the oldest one become bishop? He sit next to the bishop of the archdiocese. And then the one after him until the last. So we recognize who is the oldest in the ordination, not in the age. Okay, you got this? This is how we go. As uh, we were also reading, always the chair, uh, the throne, when you enter the church, is on the left side, inside the altar, behind the curtain. Okay? Let's go to the uh, slide after that. Uh, can I uh, ask uh, Mary? to read this, uh, Mary uh, Kriak, uh, Kriakos. Barakh Marabuna. Oh, barakh. It has four chains and 12 bells. The lower cup of the censer represents the earth and the upper cup represents heaven. The first chain stands for God the Father. The second and third chains represent the human and divine nature of God the Son. The okay. fourth chain- Mary, can you just- we go one by one, sorry, again. Okay. I will I will show it while, while you are talking about it, okay? Can you slowly, from the beginning, sorry, Mary, to bother you? It has four chains and 12 bells. You see the chains, okay? Four chains, okay? From the top, you can see this also in the picture, okay? Continue. The lower cup of the sensor represents the earth. This one. And the upper cup represents heaven. This one. The first chain stands for God the Father. Okay, this one. The second and third chains represent the human and divine nature of God the Son. Okay. The fourth chain represents God, the Holy Spirit. The joining of the chains on the circular disc on top of the hook represents the unity of the Holy Trinity. Okay. Can just I stop you here, Mary? I don't know if you remember during the liturgy in the very beginning, of course, if you attend the liturgy from the beginning, 
uh, after uh, reading the Bible, the priest usually he read, we call Hosoyo and from Yun. After he read it, the deacon will uh, stand front of Abuna, the priest, the deacon who served the liturgy, will have the, uh, the thermo or censer, he hold it like this, front of Abuna. Then certain time, Abuna, he hold one chain, then two chain, when three chain. This is what it is, okay? So this is pretty much become like three. One, the father, okay? Two, they represent the two nature of Jesus, the divine and the human nature. He hold it next to each other in other. And the other one is the Holy Spirit. So a lot of time they ask me, Abuna, why you do this? This is it's all meaning. Then certain time, of course, the deacon will be holding. Abuna will make his hands going around like this, okay? So will goes one, two, then three, okay? This is explained that the, now when we are going to read, we'll, we'll, we'll understand why, because a lot of time they say, Abuna, we don't understand. Why you make like this? It looks like just move, it's not move, okay? Every single move, it has meaning behind it. Continue, Mary, please. The 12 bells represent the 12 apostles. You see the bells? Okay. The coal represents the sinners. Inside, we put it the coal. The fire signifies the Holy Spirit by whose contact the black coal shines and glows, representing purification of the sinners to become the children of God. The incense shows the grace of the Holy Trinity and cleansing of sins. As the smoke goes up to the high, so also our prayers should go high as it is mentioned in Psalm 141.2. The lower cup is also considered the womb of the Virgin Mary, where God the fire indwelled without burning in it, as the case of the burning bush in Exodus 3.2.3. 3. So you see the, the, the bottom part has two meanings represent the earth, the sky, and represent also the womb of Virgin Mary. Why? Because there is inside fire while this part doesn't burn up. Like Mary, she received the, the, the fire, which is the divine nature of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, when the angel Gabriel came to her and he said, the Holy Spirit upon you. So she received, but she, she, she was still able to, to, to handle this, the divine nature without burning, the same thing, okay? Can you continue, please? Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah 6, 2, 3. Can you read the part on the left side, please? The sounds coming from the shaking of the bells of the censer represents the different ranks of angels that always chant and praise by saying, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty. So, thank you very much, Mary. So when the priest, uh, when the deacon hold the candle, the, uh, the censer or the fermo, and he goes around, so pretty much he shake it. And certain time he shake it, some certain time he doesn't during the liturgy. So pretty much when we break, we make soyo, when the choir sing holy, holy, Kaddish, Kaddish, when we, at the beginning of liturgy, we make, uh, we, uh, the priest say, Kaddish, okay? So the choir or the deacon or people, they answer, uh, then you see the deacon shake, which is now singing. And this is what Isaiah saw. So we are not doing this because we, we design it, but pretty much what God showed to us, we just recall it and we practice it. So that's why certain time the deacon, he shake the censer, certain time in the liturgy, not. Because when we praise God, when we make soyo or breaking the bread, when we sing holy, 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 this time pretty much he shake it, which is he represent the angel who really, the angels who really are this time 
like Isaiah saw them praising God, saying, holy, 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 okay? And you see on the picture on the left side, the, the coal can be this shape, any shape, it doesn't matter. And also the incense that we use during the uh, liturgy, okay? Let's continue because it has a lot of explanation. The slide after that, thank you very much, Mary. Megan, if you don't mind, can you read this slide, please? Abuna, uh, Lucas has his hand up. Do you mind answering his question first? No, no, of course I don't mind. Go ahead. I just had a quick question. How about um, the people who are not on the altar um, when you when um, it's being shaken towards them and they bow and kiss and put their hand on their forehead? What's the point of that? Can you explain to me more, Luke? So I so, you know when you know when the deacon is shaking it, the, yes. shaking the sensor, and he he does it towards the people, and yes. the, the people will, will oh, kind of bow their head, okay, yeah, or like that. Okay, okay. So I understand now. So now we will talk about we, in the uh, second slide. Okay, the slide after that, because this is. Also, the smoke, especially during the liturgy when the deacon, when we recite the prayer of a creed, he goes around the church, yes? So pretty much he represents the gospel that went around the whole world. So when he shake it to us like these good news, of course, you, we cannot see the good news. This is why we use samples. I explained this in the very beginning of uh, talking about this slide. The church used material things to explain something unseen. Okay? How can you see the gospel? How can, see, how can you see the prayer? How can you know if there is an angels of, of there are angels or not? How can you see the Holy Spirit? So we use material to represent so we use seen material to represent or explain unseen things happen. So this is good news, which is the smoke, the smoke of the incense when the incense is burned, represent our prayers and represent also the good news that smells good and went all over the world. So when we make like this, we take a blessing, like we receive, we believe, Okay, don't forget, this is, it happens, especially when we do, the deacon, he go, goes around the church. In other words, that I say, I believe in the faith of this church, and I accept it. So only we make like this, if the deacon, you know, shake it toward us, like we, we make like this, kiss it, and put it, like I accept the faith of this church, which is I receive it. How can I say I receive it? So we use, let's say, we act to show something behind it. This is what it means exactly. You got me, Luke? Yeah, tell the Alba. Hello, Megan. Can you read Megan, please? Yes, so the continu continuation of the formal. The bismol is in Syriac and in English is the incense. In the Old Testament, perfume was made from sweet spices. And the Lord says to Moses, take sweet spices, stacked in anica and galbanum, and pure frankincense with these sweet spices. There shall be equal amounts of each. You shall make of these an incense, a compound according to the art of the perfumer salted, pure, and holy. And you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. But as for the incense which you shall make, you shall not make any for yourselves according to its composition. It shall be to you holy for the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. 
So you see how the incense was very, very important in, in this is what God said to Moses. So the incense has to use for the church because people maybe they, now we don't have this practice, but all days they used to take it and use the incense that has to be offered to God. They use it to offer it to different idols or different gods. So God is telling them the incense that we use for the church or for God, don't use it for any reason. And the person who uses it for any other cause should be cut from the people. But also you see like the spices. So we don't use things because we do like it, but because it's mentioned in the Bible and we just recall it during the liturgy. Can you read please again? If, I mean, continue reading sweet incense. Yeah, sweet incense was burnt every morning. Aaron shall burn on it sweet incense every morning. When he tends the lambs, he shall burn on it. From Exodus chapter 30, verse 7. The next says, do this. Take censers, Korah and all your company. From Numbers chapter 16, verse 6. So you see the incense. I, I remember sometimes people, they make fun. They say, oh, you put a lot of incense. Why we should use incense? It's not we. we, it's not like something that looks fun or it look like uh, good to do it. It's mentioned in the Bible, every, every, he say, every, he say, sweet incense, uh, Aaron's shall burn on sweet incense every morning. So there was certain di direction how to use the incense. And the church, again, recall that and we use it to read the liturgy. Can you continue, please? Paul says incense was an inevitable item in the temple, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. So even St. Paul in the New Testament, not only Old Testament, Paul talking about the significance of the, uh, the uh, answers. Continue, please. It reminds us of our Lord's sacrifice, which is a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. From Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. So when we burn incense, it's like we sacrifice these incense. Uh, pretty much, we, didn't, we don't need to sacrifice because the sacrifice of Jesus is enough. But this is, we use it as to, to remember that how much we should also we sacrifice. And we don't smell the incense unless we put it on the living charcoal. Okay, which is if we don't burn it, we don't smell it. That call that telling us a lot. If we want people to see our faith, I think sometimes maybe to do extra step, we have to do some sacrifice. Okay, it's not enough only to say we are a Christian. How come if we don't fast, we don't pray, we don't go to church? So the incense we don't smell it unless you put it on the fire. Also, our faith won't goes up unless we go sometimes. We do extra sacrifice. Okay. Continue, please. It signifies heavenly worship. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Revelation 8, 3 to 4. You see, when, when John, the beloved, he saw Revelation, he saw that in heaven, incense was used also. Okay? Can you read the things on the left side, please? This is some spiritual message about the incense. The incense is the faith that as the smoke goes up, prayer also goes up with it to heaven. Let my prayer be set before 
you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. This is from Psalm 141, verse 2. You see? So when we pray again, so you, the beauty of the church, we don't see our prayer. But when we burn the incense, the smoke goes up and the smoke or uh, sweet smells of the smoke that come out of burning the, the, the incense, it, it, we say it's like our prayer. Let's, the way our, the smoke of the in, burning incense goes up, let's also our prayer goes up. The way this, the incense smells good, let God accept, let God the smell pleasing from the prayer that we lift up to him. So we use seen material to explain the unseen spiritual uh, or blessing happening around us. Can you just read? This is the last thing about uh, sometimes this sensor. We have it in our homes. Okay, go ahead, please. The incense burner. The faithful usually have this in their homes. That way, when the clergy visit their homes to be blessed, they add the incense in it with the coal and bless the home. Okay. So this is pretty much about the sensor, about the incense, about the coal, the charcoal, and all the things that we use during the liturgy. Because I receive a lot of questions when I do visit Abuna. Why you make like this your hand? Why you do this? Why you hold the chains? What mean the bells? What mean the top? All this is very, very clear in these two or three slides that talk about the sensor. Is there any question about this before we go to the other slide? We only have two more slides. Nothing, okay. Now, uh, can I ask Mary Haneke to read uh, this uh, slide, please, Mary? So we call it Sisley, in case just the pronunciation sometimes. We call it Sisley. Okay, go ahead. Okay. It's a round shaped silver or gold object with silver bells mounted on a long pole. In the center of the fans, the seraphim face and wings represented. The fans symbolize the presence of angels around the altar. The sounds represent the seraphim's praises and chanting, as well as the fluttering of their wings around the mysteries. It is carried in procession and used at the most solemn parts of the Holy Corbono to convey the heavenly experience. Okay, so you see how the photo, the one on the left is not really very clear, but tell us there is different shapes, but the same way, bells around, round shape, uh, the, 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 the face of the, the, the angel inside in the middle, and how you see the uh, six wings, okay? And we use it, we shake it, the same of sensor, certain time when we praise God. So the sound is like praising God. And when we, do, we have a precision during the feast, let's say uh, Christmas, Easter, the priest, the deacon, the bishop, if it's the bishop, we go around also, we see they shake it because we do precision the Lord. So we shake it. We kind of say, we are praising you, God. Okay. You see how the, uh, the seraphim is in the middle, the fans, or we call it also, uh, you know, uh, susle and the bells which is around to make this noise. Can you just read the, the writing underneath that picture? Yes, of course. Okay. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. I you think see? it's Isaiah 6, 2 to 4. 
Yes, thank you, Mary. So you see how we recall that event is very important event. It's in book of Isaiah chapter six. We read it too many times. I encourage you to go read it. So why we recall that? Because that time happened very important thing. There was glory of God. So all God always glorified by the angel. But human, out of their weakness, they were not able to see it. Certain time, God allowed that to happen in the temple. And Isaiah saw that. And he wrote it. So pretty much every time we do liturgy, there is an angel filling the temple, uh, the altar. Okay? Always, always the angels, always they praise God when the clergy, with the deacon, they serve the liturgy, especially during the soil, breaking the bread, when we sing holy, holy, holy. They are also participating, but out of our limitation, we cannot see that. So instead, we use this shaker or susle, we use censer, we use uh, uh, incense, we use uh, the deacon ranks to recall that event that the, as Isaiah was able to see it. We don't see it, but we believe every time we do the liturgy, that event happened exactly, okay? Thank you very much, Mary. Now, last uh, uh, slide. I will ask Nahreen to read if she doesn't mind. Abuna, just a quick question on that. Previous. Please, please, Sam. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. No, it's okay. Um, is there a significance to the deacon standing behind the priest or bishop um, when they're shaking the shakers? You know, meanwhile, the candles are always next to them. I mean, it's not behind him rather around okay? okay so this is what isaiah exactly so the god was there the angels was around praising god so the same thing when the priest hold body and blood the two deacon around they hold the candles the other two deacon they hold the shakers all sisley so pretty much we recall that event we kind of act the thing the same thing happened we, we, we do it during the liturgy. Okay, so that you surround the priest, got it, thanks. Yes, yes, yes. Some, some churches, let's say, if this is the, 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 the altar, okay, you see one deacon from this side, another deacon from this side. Sometimes if this is the altar, the priest stand here, is facing east, you see them here behind on the right, on the left. So sometimes just, the, the, the way the altar is designed, but usually has to be like this in top of the body and blood. They shake it when we sing holy, 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 Kaddish, 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 or during we do the soil. Thank you, Luna. You're welcome, sir. Sorry, if there is another question, please go ahead. No question? Can you please, Nareen, read the last slide for tonight? So, Nokusho, the church bell. The church bell is used to assemble the congregation of faithful to the church for worship services. Just as the trumpet or herald used to call the army for battle in olden times. The ringing of the bell before the Holy Qurbono alerts the faithful people outside the church that the Holy Qurbono is to commence soon. The church teaches us to make the sign of the cross as our focus should be on the happenings inside the sanctuary. Because of the of above said reason, once the Holy Qurbo begins, the big church bell should not ring. In addition to that, it is used to ring at the arrival of a patriarch or a bishop, and also during the procession during the feasts. It is rung in a slow pace when a dead body is brought to the church for the funeral. Okay, so pretty much the bell or no khusho, we call it. Bell, it's, imagine all days they had no TVs, no radio, no social media, 
So if you want to call people to assemble people for any event, you have to make noise. So it become this no kusho, or when they ring it, that's mean there is something. It has big meaning in the church, the 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 bell. Uh, I I read I read one time. Uh, uh, they said when Noah before the flood when he was collecting the animal he was using kind of piece of wood and he was hitting in that to recall the animals and also there was people helping him like employee to, to build the ark so also they had like shift or certain time to begin. Also, he used to use this to call people. This is in the tradition of the church. It's nothing written in the Bible. So the, the nokusho or the church bell is very beautiful. And each certain uh, melody or ring, it has different, of course, now we don't use it here because Unfortunately, the people are not using, uh, leaving, sorry, around the church bef like before. Before, where the church was, the believer houses used to be around. So if you hear the bell ringing certain time, you know either if it's for liturgy or noon prayer, Ramshu prayer, Vesper, or morning prayer, or if there is somebody visiting like Bishop or Patriarch, or if sad event happened, somebody died, clergy. So for each ring, there was like, it was a, a code. When you hear this ring, you know what's going on in the church, okay? And that was a way to assemble or call people to come to the church. You see how beautiful, usually we have like a tower in the front of the church or in behind or in the, in the, uh, uh, circle front of the church they used to have it uh, or on top in the middle of the church or in the front doesn't matter where but usually as you see the tradition the Syriac Orthodox tradition the picture on the left and the picture on the right this is how they used to hang the bell and they usually hang it with a rope and certain way you move the rope certain way you make different ranks or uh, melody. Any question about the bell specifically or about what we had done in general in uh, this uh, Bible study for tonight? Or if there is any question, uh, Megan? I haven't received anything privately, Abuna, but Lucas did just raise his hand. Go ahead, please. All right. Um, a question with, uh, I know like when my mom passes a church, she always makes a cross. Um, does this have to do kind of something with like the bell ringing? No. Uh, I, I wish we all learned this habit when we pass by the church, when we pass by cemetery, when we pass even some of the sin, they say, if you, when you pass by hospital. So when we cross ourselves, we make this cross. Usually in our church, we make, we say, Qadish, 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 Mario, Haithon, Odom, Nishmai, Waro. Okay, we say, holy, holy, holy. The same thing that the angels, okay? So when we hear the, the bells, we should usually people, let's say, all these people, they have farm, okay, land, or they have whatever. When they hear the ring of the bell, every person in his place, he raise up his head, he look to the church, he says, Shema, Bobro, Hayo, Qadish, Yohadalo, Shariro, Amin, Qadish, Qadish, Qadish. So we praise God when you hear, okay? So when we make this uh, sign, it's pretty much blessing. Okay, and we, we, we participate with all our brothers and it's kind of ID. When you pass by the church, you make cross, so you identify yourself. So this is your ID as a Christian. 
I was reading for modern Greek saint. He say, when you pass by church, you make this a cross. So you, you kind of submit yourself to the faith of the church. And when you go by cemetery, you cross yourself because you're still alive. And you remember that you still, there is a, you, I mean, you still have an opportunity to repent and come to God. And when you cross by hospital, you make cross your, on yourself, you thank God and you pray for the people who are sick and you pray for the people who are helping regardless, the doctors, family members, nurses. So this is why you make a cross in front of the hospital. Thank you, Lucas. Any other question? No question. Okay. Lucas, can you end up with a small prayer, please? Sure. Since you are the most one, ask a question. All right. Shalom. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this gathering. Lord, we thank you for Abu and Andrew for giving us this time and teaching us um, about all, all of our church traditions, Lord. Father, we thank you for giving us such an amazing and rich church, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to, well, the opportunity to join and be a part of the, the true church, Lord. Father, I ask that you help us remember all these things, help us feel your presence at all times. When we go to church, Lord, help us understand what's going on. And Lord, we ask that you help us um, have all this get us closer to you, Lord, help us to live a Christian life, Lord. Father, I pray, for all, I pray for all the sick, all the needy, Lord. Anybody here whose family is hurting, Lord, that you restore them, Lord. I ask for all your blessings to be upon us and all of our church, Lord. Help us grow. Help us to be great servants of yours, Lord. Thank you again, and I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I can Bashmayo Baro, Hablan Lahmot Sunkon and Yo Moon, Wishbuklan, Hawain, Wahtohain, I can do for Hanan Shbakal Highway, Lotalan Nisuno, Elofa Solan Mimbisho, Metul de Lohim and Kutho, Hilo Shwatul Olam on me. Amen. God bless all of you and keep me in your prayer and pray for the whole group of uh, the Bible study and for our families member, for our churches. And I pray that God continue to bless us and will be with us. Amen.